Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna to, to the, the Son of David. David. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophets, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the fowl of the donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he had entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet! Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed the Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you, through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the, in the name, name of the Lord. Lord.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Today is Palm Sunday. The crowds cheered and shouted, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They waved palm branches and spread their garments out on the road as Jesus entered Jerusalem. The whole city joined in to give Jesus a hero's welcome, a ticker tape parade, a royal reception, a citywide party. But the cheers were shallow and the celebration was short-lived, for in the background the chief priest, the scribes and Pharisees, Sadducees and Herodians were green with envy and red with anger. They set their traps with tricky words and bought their spy with 30 coins and prepared to kill the Son of God. Today is Palm Sunday, a day of paradox. Today, the king rode into the capital on a lowly colt. Today, he cried at this royal reception. Today, the cheers briefly held back the drumbeats of doom. Today, only the Christ candle burns throughout the service. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to take our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The second lesson is from Philippians chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, 
who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Matthew. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I turn Jesus over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. From that time on, he was looking for an opportunity to turn him in. On the first day of the festival of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover meal? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and say, The teacher says, My time is near. I am to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. The disciples did just as Jesus instructed them. They prepared the Passover. That evening he took his place at the table with the twelve disciples. As they were eating, he said, I assure you that one of you will betray me. Deeply saddened, each one said to him, I'm, I'm not, not the one, one am, am I, Lord? Lord? He replied, The one who will betray me is the one who dips his hand with me into this bowl. The Son of Man goes to his death, just as it is written about him. But how terrible it is for that person who betrays the Son of Man. It would have been better for him if he had never been born. Now Judas, who would betray him, replied, It's not me, is it, Rabbi? Jesus answered, You said it. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. He took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is, which is poured out for many so that their sins may be forgiven. I tell you, I won't drink wine again until that day when I drink it in a new way with you in my Father's kingdom. Then after singing songs of praise, they went to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Tonight you will all fall away because of me. This is because it is written, I will hit the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will go off in all directions. But after I'm raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter replied, If everyone else stumbles because of you, I'll never stumble. Jesus said to him, I assure you that before the rooster crows tonight, you will deny me three times. Peter said, Even if I must die alongside you, I won't deny you. All the disciples said the same thing. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. He said to his disciples, Stay here while I go and pray over there. When he took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, he began to feel sad and anxious. Then he said to them, I'm very sad. It's as if I'm dying. Stay here and keep alert with me. Then he went a short distance further and fell upon his face and prayed. My father, if it's possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not what I want, but what you want. He came back to his disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, Couldn't you stay alert one hour with me? Stay alert and pray so that you won't give in to temptation. The spirit is eager, but the flesh is weak. A second time he went away and prayed. My father, if it's not possible that this cup be taken away unless I drink it, then let it be what you want. Again he came and found them sleeping. Their eyes were heavy with sleep. But he left them and again went and prayed the same words for a third time. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, 
Will you sleep and rest all night? Look, the time has come for the Son of Man to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let's go. Look, here comes my betrayer. While Jesus was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came. With him was a large crowd carrying swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priests and elders of the people. His betrayer had given them a sign. Arrest the man I kiss. Just then he came to Jesus and said, Hello, Rabbi. Then he kissed him. But Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came and grabbed Jesus and arrested him. One of those with Jesus reached for a sword. Striking the high priest's slave, he cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put the sword back into its place. All those who use the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think that I am not able to ask my father and he would send to me more than twelve battle groups of angels right away? But if I did that, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that say this must happen? Then Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me like a thief? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, but you didn't arrest me. But all this has happened, so that what the prophets said in the scriptures might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left Jesus and ran away. Those who arrested Jesus led him to the high priest. The legal experts and elders had gathered there. Peter followed him from a distance until he came to the high priest's courtyard. He entered that area and sat outside with the officers to see how it would turn out. The chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they could put him to death. They didn't find anything that they could use from the many false witnesses who were willing to come forward. But finally they found two who said, This, this man, man said, I can, can destroy God's, God's temple and, and rebuild it in three days. days. Then the high priest stood and said to Jesus, Aren't you going to respond to the testimony these people have brought against you? But Jesus was silent. The high priest said, By the living God, I demand that you tell us whether you are the Christ, God's Son. You said it. Jesus replied, but I say to you that from now on, you'll see the Son of Man sitting on the right side of the Almighty and coming on the heavenly clouds. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He's insulting God. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, you've heard his insult against God. What do you think? And they answered, He, he deserves, deserves to, to die. die. Then they spit in his face and beat him. They hit him and said, Prophesy for us, Christ, who hit you? Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant woman came and said to him, You were also with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of all of them, saying, I don't know what you are talking about. When they went over to the gate, another woman saw Peter and said to those who were there, This, this man, man was, was with, with Jesus, Jesus the, the man, man from, from Nazareth. Nazareth. With a solemn pledge, he denied it again, saying, I don't know the man. A short time later, those standing there came and said to Peter, You, you must be, be the one, one of, them. of them. The, the way, way you talk gives, gives you away. away. Then he cursed and swore, I don't know the man. At that very moment, the rooster crowed. Peter remembered Jesus' words. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went and out and cried uncontrollably. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people reached the decision 
to have Jesus put to death. They bound him, led him away, and turned him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, had, who had betrayed Jesus, saw that Jesus was condemned to die, he felt deep regret. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders and said, I did wrong because I betrayed an innocent man. But they said, What, what is, is that, that to us? us? That's, That's your, your problem. problem. Judas threw the silver pieces into the temple and left. Then he went and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the silver pieces and said, According, According to, to the, the law, law it's, it's not, not right, right to, to put, put this, this money in the, the treasury. Since, Since it was used to pay for someone's life, it's, it's unclean. unclean. So they decided to use it to buy the potter's field where strangers could be buried. That's why that field is called the field of blood to this very day. This fulfillment of the words of Jeremiah the prophet. And I took the 30 pieces of silver, the price for the one whose price had been set by some of the Israelites, and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord had commanded me. Jesus was brought before the governor. The governor said, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, That's what you say. But he didn't answer when the chief priest and elder accused him. Then Pilate said, Don't you hear the testimony they bring against you? But he didn't answer, not even a single word. So the governor was greatly amused. It was customary during the festival for the governor to release the crowd to the crowd one prisoner, whomever they might choose. At that time, there were well-known prisoners like Jesus. When the crowd had come together, Pilate had asked them, Whom would you like me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? He knew that the leaders of the people had handed him over because of jealousy. While he was serving as judge, his wife sent this message to him. Leave that righteous man alone. I've suffered much today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barnabas and to kill Jesus. The governor said, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Barabbas. They replied, Pilate said, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, Crucify him. him. But he said, Why? What wrong has he done? They shouted even louder, Crucify, Crucify him. him! Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere and that a riot was starting, so he took the water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I'm innocent of this man's blood, he said. It's your problem. All the people replied, Let, Let his, his blood be on us and, and our, our children. children. Then he released Barnabas to them. He had Jesus whipped and handed over him to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's house and they gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a red military coat on him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They put a stick in his right hand. Then they bowed down in front of him and mocked him saying, Hey, hey King, King of, of the Jews. Jews. After they spit on him, they took the stick and stuck his head again and again. When they had finished mocking him, they stripped him of the military coat and put on his own clothes back. They led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they found Simon, a man from Cyrene. They forced him to carry his cross. When they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the skull place, they gave Jesus wine mixed with vinegar to drink. But after tasting it, he didn't want to drink it. After they crucified him, they divided up his clothes among them by drawing lots. They sat there, guarding him. They placed above his head the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. They crucified him with two outlaws, one on his right side and one on his left. Those who were walking by insulted Jesus, shaking their heads and saying, 
So you were, you were going, going to, destroy to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, were you? Save yourself. If you are God's son, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the legal experts and the elders, were making fun of him, saying, He, he saved, saved others, others, but he can't save himself. He's, he's the, the king, king of Israel, Israel so, so let, let him, him come, come down, down from, from the cross now. Then we'll believe in him. He trusts in God, so let God deliver him now if he wants to. He said, I'm God's son. The outlaws who were crucified with him insulted him in the same way. From noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. At about three, Jesus cried with a loud shout, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you left me? After hearing him, some standing there said, He's, He's calling Elijah. Elijah. One of them ran over took a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a pole. He offered it to Jesus to drink. But the rest of them said, Let's, Let's see if Elijah, Elijah will come, come and save, save him. him. Again, Jesus cried out with a loud shout. Then he died. Look, the curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised. After Jesus' resurrection, they came out of their graves and went into the holy city where they appeared to many. When the centurions and with those with, who were with him were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and what had just happened, they were filled with awe and said, this, this was, was certainly, certainly God's, God's son. son. Many women were watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to serve him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Joseph and the mother of Zebedee's son. The evening a man came, Joseph. He was a rich man from Arimathea who had become a disciple of Jesus. He came to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate gave him permission to take it. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had carved out of the rock. After he rolled a large stone over the door of the tomb, he went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting in front of the tomb. The next day, which was the day after the preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate, and they said, Sir, Sir we remember that while that the deceiver was still alive, he said, After three days I will arise. Therefore, order the grave to be sealed until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell people, He has been risen from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate replied, You have soldiers for guard duty. Go and make it as secure as you know how. Then they went and secured the tomb by sealing the stone and posting the guards. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Let us confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We believe, believe in, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who for our sake shared human life and human death, even death on a cross. We believe in the love of God, who is the source of all life, and whose power raised Jesus from the dead. We believe in the community of the Holy Spirit, who works without ceasing to unite believers of every time and place in their one Lord Jesus Christ, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Let us pray. In these challenging times, we turn to God in hopeful prayer for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation.
Let us pray for those on the front line of this pandemic, for all hospitals, doctors, nurses, and all healthcare workers that are working for healing in our communities. We particularly pray for those in our city, in Stormont Vale, and KU Medical Systems. Lord, in these times, give, give us, us hope. hope. Let us pray for those who are isolated and lonely at home, those who are elderly and miss the visits of family and friends, those who live alone and want the company of their normal daily lives, those who are in need of social services yet see a world of closed doors around them. Lord, in these times, give, give us, us hope. Let us pray for those in leadership across our city, state, country, and world. Give wise decision-making and proper counsel to our elected leaders in confronting this crisis. Let resources stay abundant for charities in our community, that their leaders may be able to continue to assist those most in need. Lord, in these times, give yes. us hope. Let us pray for those who will be experiencing economic distress, especially those who have lost their employment. We remember all those who feed us, clothe us, and give us joy in fellowship and entertainment. Lord, in these times, give, give us hope. hope. Let us pray for the children in our community Give assurance to our little ones that they will one day play with their friends on the playground again, that their teachers will continue to guide them in learning about the world around them, that their parents may, give, may have the imagination and creativity to make this moment a time of increased bonding with their loved ones. Lord, in these times, give, give us, us hope. hope. Let us pray for our church and faith during this time, for our congregations of first, our saviors and trinity, as we navigate a future together and our growth in cooperation, for our pastors and councils, that they lead with faith during these challenging times, for our leaders in the synod and the ELCA, that they give us direction for being the church in a new reality. Lord, in these times, give, give us, us hope. hope. Lord, this is not the first challenge we have faced as churches and communities. Let us be mindful that you have given us the strength to have hope for the future. You gave us hope when Noah saw the world flood around him. You gave us hope when our years in the desert with Moses felt like the promised land would never come. Finally, you gave us the ultimate sign of hope when after being laid in the grave from your day on Calvary, you came to us on that Easter morning to show us that your love defeats the power of death. Therefore, according to your steadfast love, we take all our prayers on this day and lift them up to you. Give us hope through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We worship the Prince of Peace, who is our advocate and comforter, our God who offers us a peace that surpasses all understanding. This is the peace that we share. This is the peace we share with each other throughout time and space, when we are together and when we are apart. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with, with you. you. In God, we have been richly blessed, and so it is a spiritual practice to share what we have been given. We ask you to consider giving to your church. The stores may have closed, and the world may feel like it has stopped, but the work of the Lord continues each day. Thank you for your support in this ministry with your offering. Merciful God, receive the sacrifice of our praise and thanksgiving 
and the offering of our lives, that following in the way of the cross, we may know the joy of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. With hope in our hearts, let us pray together the prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
marked with the cross of Christ, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.